we're coming up on Hospital Point. And it's mile marker one for what? For the Intracoastal Waterway. This Yay. is the northern terminus. The southern terminus is? Key West. Key West. Goodbye, Smith Island. Lots of stories. This is the earliest start we've had so far on the trip, day three. And is this the longest leg so far, do you think? It is. So yesterday we did 55 miles. We're looking at 64. All right, we got a 70 mile run to Norfolk. And then we'll see uh, how the city presents itself, what kind of speed we can make through the city. Um, how far down the Elizabeth River we get. Long day ahead of us. So we just spotted the first private craft of the entire cruise that we've seen. Sailing catamaran. They're brave, just like us. So we are just cruising through the Chesapeake Bay. We're hopefully going to get out of it today. We're about halfway between Smith Island and Norfolk. That is where we leave the bay and hopefully start heading toward the ICW. I'm not gonna lie, it's been a lot of fun on the bay. It's been a lot different than I expected. And we had very crappy weather. I wish we could have uh, worked with the weather instead of against it for a lot of it, but we were on a strict schedule and we had to weigh those benefits versus the risks and uh, so far it has worked out it just got a little bit scary <laughs> right now things are smooth the water is a lot calmer than it has been the last couple of days and we're just cruising so let me give you a little bit of a tour around the helm while we're underway obviously you have your wheel and also for steering control we have this Simrad Autopilot. This is one of the nicest things on the entire boat because it means in big open water like this all you have to do is set your course and keep an eye out for traffic. And there is traffic. You do have to be attentive. You can't fall asleep at a wheel. This is just as involved as normal boating mentally. The only difference is you're not physically turning the wheel to compensate for the waves. So that autopilot is a lifesaver. Have your VHF radio, obviously. Throttles on this side. Shifters on this side. You have all of your breakers and switches. Gauges. I like the way this is laid out, where instead of having one side for the port engine and one side for the starboard, you have your oil temperature left and right, pressure left and right, engine temperature left and right, fuel left and right, and then battery left and right. I think it's easier to understand that way at a glance and compare the two. Obviously tachometers, and I like this sink meter between them. That's been very helpful, especially since the throttles aren't exactly uh, tied together we might need to go in and adjust the cable to make sure this one is at the exact right speed to keep them synced when these levers are together. And on this side, we have our radar. I have never been on a boat with actual radar before. This is very cool. It's been fun to mess with and just learn about it as I go. This is an older unit, obviously, but it gets the job done. And up here is our navigation built into the boat. This is good, it's as a backup right now. The maps loaded onto it are kind of old, so we're not using it as a reliable first line of defense right now. It's more like a backup 
in case we run out of battery on our Navionics, which is running on this tablet here. So that is the helm of this cruiser's yachts, and it's a, it's a dream come true. It really is. I'm enjoying every second on the water. I just can't get enough. This is everything I've ever wanted. And thank you, Rob and Sarah, for inviting me. Honestly, like, no words. This is amazing. And thank you, Captain George, for always keeping us on course. We, uh, we've gone places that only you would have known about so far. <laughs> and uh, it's been an adventure. Uh, very this is only the third day on the water. It feels like it's been a book full of adventures. So we're coming up on a really cool landmark in the middle of the bay. There's a lighthouse built on a stand. It's not actually on land. They had to build a foundation, build a tower for this lighthouse to stand on, and it's protecting boats from running aground on a shallow shoal. This is Wolf Trap Lighthouse. We're just about to pass it. I wanted to show it to you because it's so cool. Don't get too close. You might run aground. But you know what? The rain, I don't think, bothers me. Maybe it does. <laughs> that looks like a lot of rain coming in. Yeah. All right. Oh, snow. Why are you not like that? Are you serious? Snow? Really? That's what it is. Wow. 34 plus 9. 43 plus a little jig and a jog. I'd say it's over 40, but maybe not quite as far as 50. Okay. What book yes. is this? Companion Chart Kit, Map Tech, and it's all about using charts. And um, when I first researched in the loop, they were saying, yeah, you can use all that electric, uh, electronics to learn your way about, but what if something happens and you need to be able to read charts by paper? And I have become an expert reader of charts. And this book shows not just charts, but uh, also... It also gives me marinas, and it gives me their phone number, the number of slips, what they offer, water and cable, and all the amenities that they have. So oh, that's really incredible. Yes. So you know all that before you even give them a call. Exactly. So, so the call is really just to check if they have a spot and yes. to book it. Yep. That's right. That's amazing. Here's where we came from. Right across the mouth of the Potomac River is Smith Island. And we've done about 50 miles south and we're right here off the mouth of the York River and we're going to stay in 10, 11 feet of water paralleling the coast until we hit the main shipping channel and then we're going to make the turn and drop down into the Elizabeth River. Don't get us pulled over by the Navy, Rob. Hey, I speak the language, that's okay. okay that's, that's a good point. Making our way to Ocean Yacht Marina, you said? Ocean Yacht Marina, down the Elizabeth River. Is that in Norfolk or? It's actually in Portsmouth. Portsmouth. It's on the west side of the river. We're at the south end of the Chesapeake Bay. These are the famous capes of Virginia, named after the sons of James I. And of course, the main thoroughfare into the first English settlement up the James River, right about 30 miles upstream on the James River. Red right return, all right. Don't count on that for long though. Yes, I understand. Why is that? What changes? Because we're gonna be entering the ICW, the intercoastal waterway, and then, because the waterway basically parallels the coast, you don't have a going in or going out. So that and mnemonic so doesn't work anymore. Does not work anymore, right. and what so. What you wanna do is Red on the land side, right? First nice thing. Red on the land side. Red, the red on dirt. We're coming up on Hospital Point, which is uh, the Portsmouth Naval Hospital, which is the large building at the 
in the bay behind the point. And it's mile marker one for what? For the Intracoastal Waterway. And this Yay. is the northern terminus. The southern terminus is? Key West. Key West. Key West. Awesome. And we are here. We're getting so good at docking. I think we're gonna have to start swapping roles to get used to doing every job instead of just the ones that we're used to. But anyway, we're out of the Chesapeake Bay, finally, after three days, and we're into the ICW, just the very tippy top of it. Mile marker one. And um, that's it. <laughs> it's a lot more to go, but this is progress. This is a real step forward and I'm proud of us. We did about 75 or 80 miles of progress today. That's huge. Um, we're here and we're gonna go get dinner and we're getting so smooth at this. I'm proud of us. I'm proud of our crew.